What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple right after their latest keynote in San Francisco and there is plenty to talk about. So let's just recap the highlights and we were pretty much on the money with what we expected to see but there were still a few surprises. First up, OS X Mavericks is available as a free download right now, free, probably the best news of the keynote and supports some Macs as far back as 2007 running Snow Leopard or later. You really can't beat free unless it's that taco from the fair that's still giving you um, indigestion. That's too much information, Brian. And all right. Okay. Now, I think the big surprise was the name of the new fifth generation iPad at the keynote. Apple's calling it the iPad Air. I know, it almost sounds like a bad joke, but this thing weighs only one pound, packs an A7 processor, improved Wi-Fi, shares design cues from the iPad mini. There's no touch ID and no major revamp to the camera because People really shouldn't be taking pictures with their iPads anyways, and don't be this person. Now the iPad Air goes on sale November the 1st, starts at $499 for a 16 gig Wi-Fi version, and I'm looking to get one after selling my third gen iPad new. That's now the iPad old, old two gens later. You guys gotta figure that out. Now look at this video clip. It's been to classrooms, boardrooms, expeditions, even to space. And we can't wait to see where you'll take it next. Introducing the thinner, lighter, more powerful iPad Air. I think it would have really made more sense to call it the iPad Pencil, and I like that name better. Now the other no-brainer that had to happen was the announcement of the iPad Mini with Retina display that also sports an A7 processor, improved Wi-Fi, and the same design. It sounds great, right? But the Retina Display Mini starts at $399 for a 16 gig Wi-Fi version and will be available later in November. But what sticks out like a sore thumb is when you compare the Mini Retina to something like the new Nexus 7 that starts at $229. Now Apple is positioned as a premium product, I get that, but they're smoking something with that pricing and there's a reason they're losing tablet market share. $399, seriously? That's a bad Apple. And the iPad that has stood the test of time so far, the iPad 2. Apple's still selling it for $399, two plus years later. No one should buy this. And you're actually better off getting a refurbished iPad 4 from the Apple online store for $379 instead of a new iPad 2. Now we also saw new Macs. The MacBook Pro Retina line gets a revamp with new Haswell processors, integrated Intel Iris graphics, and improved battery life. The 13-inch will get nine hours of battery life and the 15-inch will get eight hours, but Apple typically is very modest with those numbers. Now they're available now and the 13-inch starts at $12.99 while the 15-inch starts at $19.99. Apple also showed off the new Mac Pro with its beefy next-gen Xeon processors, dual GPUs and more. This is a powerhouse supporting 4K video on up to three monitors. I know it's not for everyone, but high-end graphics professionals will be drooling over this one even if it's at $2,999 entry level price point. Now software is also focused at the keynote with new versions of iLife and iWorks. They'll be free when you purchase either a new Mac or iOS device. The iWorks suite gets a redesign across all apps, iCloud compatibility, and gives multiple users the ability to access and edit documents. iPhoto and iMovie get revamped with new tools and effects and sharing options. And GarageBand gets what Apple calls its biggest update ever, with up to 32 audio tracks and real-time collaboration. And there have been some updated redesigns for Apple's iOS apps, including Podcasts, Thank You, Find My iPhone, and the iTunes Trailers app. Now, you guys, there are always highlights of a keynote, from Craig Federighi's perfect hair, to Eddie Q's dojo master attire, and I'm still not sure who allowed that to happen, but Phil Schiller really won hands down with this one. So if you're a fan of The Black Knight, as I am, you can watch the entire trilogy on one charge. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Are they making a fourth movie in the Batman series that I don't know about? He didn't say The Black Knight, did he? So if you're a fan of The Black Knight, as I am, you can watch the entire trilogy on one charge. Yes. He did. And why are you clapping for that? Are you all dumb dumbs too? If you're a Closet Batman fan, you don't have to hide it. And if you call it the Black Knight, you really do. Now that's not even a bad apple, Phil. I'm giving you a Black Apple. And the only Black Knights I know about are the one in Monty Python or Martin Lawrence, and that was not a good movie. So I've heard. 
All right, let's get to our winners of our colored Mophie juice pack cases from last week. We asked you what you would do to win one of these sweet cases. Now, a lot of you freaks said you would do things naked or give me massages, but I decided against picking you. So congrats to our Twitter winners, Melvin Shannon Sr. and Sumit Katkar, who wants one because I bit on it. Our email winners are Maria Palermo and Steve from Rosemead, California, who wrote in with, a girl I'm dating also has the same last name as yours, and she's a diehard Apple fan and just bought an iPhone 5 recently. I think I could definitely impress her with this case, and hopefully we can go a step further in our relationship. You know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, but I hope this case helps out, and I hope she doesn't watch this show, and she better not be my sister. All right, congrats again, and we'll be in touch with all of you. That's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your questions and comments to theapplebyteacnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tom because I'd love to hear what you thought about Apple's event. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.